me. I made a complaint that I'm taking you through a chair class today working with the Pilates box. So you need to have the box lengthwise set up really close to the Pilates chair on where the pedal is. I have mine kind of lined up with my foot bar. Now you may have a, a different chair, but that's kind of where you want to have it lined up. I will have my pedal on a 2-2, two, two, so I've got 2-2, two, two, one two on each side, and we'll go ahead and get started. I'm going to turn away from my chair, so the very corner edge of the box, with my legs glued together. Reach your arms right up in front of you and sit up as tall as you can on those sitting bones, as if a string is lifting you up to the ceiling from the crown of the head. Big inhale here. And as you exhale, start to tuck your tailbone and roll yourself back. We're only going to roll halfway back. And I'm super squeezing my legs together, thinking of rolling everything tight into the midline. I'm going to roll as far back as I can and then roll myself back up all the way. Big inhale, sitting tall. And let's do that again. So you're rolling just about halfway back till you find that C curve where your ribs and your hips are drawing together. You're drawing everything in tight, navel drawing in, corset drawing tight, and then roll yourself back up, sitting right back up on the sitting bones. Big exhale as you scoop and tuck. Inhale, and then big exhale as you roll it back up. Let's go three more times. Tuck and scoop and roll it down. Inhale, pausing where you are. And then exhale, scooping and rolling it back up. Last two here, scoop, tuck, and roll. Inhale. And exhale, roll it back up. And one more time. This time I want you to stay down there, tuck, scoop, and roll. Take your right arm, reach it to the right, look to the right, pull it back to the center. Take your left arm, look to the left, reach to the left, Back to the center. As you do this little rotation from your rib cage, you're keeping your legs squeezing together. No movement in the pelvis at all. So we're isolating the movement right into your rib cage. If you feel any discomfort in your back, come up a little bit or tuck deeply through that pelvis. One more left. Back to the center and roll all the way up. Make sure at the very front of your box, Big inhale, this time we're going to roll all the way down. Make sure that when you roll down, you're not going to hit the chair. You're going to roll all the way down. Take the hands behind the head, elbows wide. Lift your legs into tabletop. Lift the upper body into a crunch, but keep your tailbone heavy, neutral pelvis. Tap that right toe down to the floor and back up. Tap your left toe down to the floor and back up. So just starting with little toe taps. You don't have to tap the floor. If the floor is too far away, you can definitely just tap down close to the floor. You're just taking your eye and putting it right on your belly, making sure there's no excess movement, no tucking, no arching. One more each side. Good. The next time the right leg goes down, your right shoulder is going to come across and we'll do the other side. So you're doing an upper body rotation. Again, moving from the rib cage like we did before. Just now bringing the lower body and upper body, moving both of them at the same time. Coming across the diagonal and across the diagonal. Last four and three, two. Next time, hold it up. You're going to hold up the left arm, the right leg. Your left arm is going to reach to the outside of the right knee and we're going to pulse up an inch and down an inch. Now your left foot can actually sit down on the floor if you need it a little easier or it can hover if you need it a little harder. You're doing great. You've got four and three and two and now let's switch. Hand behind the head, switch your legs. Right arm's going to come across to the left knee, then the right leg can be rested, and you'll go across one inch up and down. Again, the right leg can lift if you need it harder, you can always keep it down. Keep those shoulders back, keep the shoulders broad, the chest broad. Three, and two, and one. Good. Pull the knees into your chest, give yourself a little hug. And then let's go ahead and grab behind the hamstrings and roll yourself up. 
Squeeze the legs together. You're sitting at the very top edge of the box. Reach the arms out to a T. Try to reach those arms as long as you can. Root down through your sitting bones. We're going to twist to the right this time, twisting two times, and then come back to the center. Let's twist to the left two times and back to the center. So we're sitting up super tall and twisting from side to side, keeping your hips nice and still. Again, isolating that movement from the rib cage. Four more to go. And three. Two. One more. Really good. Come back to the center. Make sure you're still at the very edge. Reach the arms forward. We're going to tuck, scoop, and roll yourself back down. When you've gone all the way down, legs to tabletop, grab onto that right leg with the left knee, right leg with the left hand and right hand. You're going to hold that knee towards you and then switch. And then switch and switch. You can also have the hands behind the head if you feel like your neck needs a little support. I love this on the box because your leg can go a little lower. You can open up through the hip flexor, get a little more of a stretch, but only do that if it feels comfortable. If that does not feel good, keep the leg lifted a little higher. I want you to go for four, three, two, one. Pull both knees in, hold at the ankles, pull the chin or the head in towards the knees, Reach the legs long, reach the arms over the head to the chair, stretch, 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 circle the arms around and pull everything in. If this is too much, hands go behind the head, you just reach the legs away, and then you pull the legs back in. Do not overdo it with your neck, don't muscle through it. If you feel any twinge of discomfort there, support your head with your hands. Good work. You're going to do that three more times. Reach, reach, reach. Body's long. Scoop and pull in. Last two. Reach and extend. Circle the arms and pull in. You've got one more here. Reach and extend. Circle, pull in. Grab behind the hamstrings. Roll yourself up. Sit up tall at the edge of the box. Take your legs wide about the width of the box. Flex your feet. Ground down through your heels. Reach the arms back out to a T. You're going to rotate to your right. Twist. Now dive for that little pinky thumb or little pinky finger to the little pinky toe. Come all the way up. Go back to the center, other side. You're going to rotate left. Dive down. Come back up. Rotate center. Rotate right. Now when you dive down, pull the abdominals in. C curve with the spine. Come right back up and center. So you're staying scooped and curled through the spine as you go down, which may be a little different than what you're thinking with a straight back. So you're scooping and rounding, coming up, back to the center. Twist and lengthen, scoop and round, twist and lengthen, back to the center. One more each side. Nice job, last one here. And back to the center. Take the arms in front of you, bend the knees, make sure you're at the very front of the box. I promise the chair is coming. We're just going to warm up one more thing. You're going to scoop your tailbone underneath you and start to roll yourself back. Last little set of abdominals here. Hands are going to be behind the head, legs to tabletop. I want you to take your right leg to the ceiling, left leg long and low. We're going to switch and switch. Big scissors. And if you want more, you can take the hand behind the calf and give it a little pull. But don't do that at the expense of the neck. Your neck always trumps. If you feel too much in the neck, put the hands back behind the head. Think a big windshield wiper sweeping motion with those legs. Four to go. And three, two. Both legs are gonna stop to the ceiling. Turn your toes out, heels together, hands behind the head for everyone. Lift up high, drop your tail low. Take your legs and lower them down, down, down. Big exhale to lift them up, up, up. Only go far down that you don't let your ribs pop. 
you don't let your pelvis tilt. Stay nice and neutral. This may be an inch movement and that is fine. You're going down. When you feel any movement, that's your stopping point, and then you lift up. Don't worry about how it looks. Worry about how, don't worry at all, but think about how it feels. Look at your abdominals. Don't worry if your legs are going too far. Do what feels good and works good for your body. Last two. You're going to do that one more time. Squeeze those legs, wrap, wrap, wrap and pull them back in. Nice job. Pull the knees in, grab behind the hamstrings, roll it up. I think you might be warmed up. I know I am. I was freezing before this, but no longer. You're going to turn on your box on your hands and knees. Remember, we're on that 2-2 two -two for the springs. Put your hands on the pedal and bring it down even with the box. We're going to do a little bit of balance work here, a little more core work, some stability, and now on our tabletop. Take your right leg, reach it behind you. Square your hips off. Try to keep this pedal as still and stable as you can. Keeping the hips as square as you can. We're going to very carefully bend the elbows and straighten the elbows. Now, if you put too much weight in your hands, you're going to really push that pedal down and you don't want to tumble forward. So think of rooting down through that left shin, keeping the weight back into your hips as well as into your hands. Two more with the double arm press, and now we're going to go to single arm. So the left arm is going to reach over the foot bar, or excuse me, over the chair, and we'll do it again. Bend and stretch. This is going to amp it up a little bit. If this is too much, the hand goes right back down. Four. And three. Two. Hold the arm still, hold the pedal down. The right leg and left arm lift up an inch, down an inch, up an inch, down an inch. So you're just lifting and lowering, holding that pedal still. It's a lot harder than doing this on the floor where your arm is just resting on the floor in a stable surface. Two more to go. And last one here. Nice job. We'll put the hand down. You're going to turn your body towards the right. Your left hand is going to stay on the pedal. You're going to lift the right hand and bring it on the hip. Now, instead of bending the arm to move the pedal, you're going to use your abdominals. You're going to cinch your waist, push the pedal down, and then back up. It's not a big motion. It's a little push and a lift. Rib to hip and lift. Air on the side of caution where you would go smaller to begin with. So smaller motion is great. If you start getting too big, that's when you can get into trouble getting the pedal too far away from you. Two more presses, your arm is nice and straight and you're moving from your abdominals. Hold your next one down, take your right leg, lift it up, bring it down. So you're holding the pedal still now and moving the right leg. Good, we're gonna do that four more times. Keep lifting your sternum, rolling the shoulders back, right up against that imaginary wall behind you. Hold the leg lifted and give me little circles. Five, four, keep pushing the pedal down. Three, two, reverse your circle. Five, four, three, two, one. Turn yourself back to the pedal, put both hands on the pedal, both knees and tabletop. Press the pedal down until you have it flush with the box. And we'll go back to the bend and push. This shouldn't be a ton of weight. It's not designed to fatigue the triceps. It's designed to work on stabilizing muscles to keep the core active. Two more. And one more. Take your left leg, lift it back, and we'll do that again. So now we've got the left leg lifted and you're pushing down and up with the arms. Good. Keep rooting down through the right shin. That's going to help you. One more. Amping it up one more level. The right arm's going to go over the chair. Your left arm is back. Your left leg is behind you. Eight more presses with the left arm this time. Keep rooting down through that right shin. That's what helps me to stabilize. 
So you've got two more, bend and stretch, bend and hold. The arm and leg go up an inch, down an inch. Hold the pedal still, up an inch, down an inch. If it's too much, the hand can always come back to the pedal. Two to go, and one more here. Right hand goes back to the pedal. You're gonna turn your body to the left. Your left hand's gonna go to your hips, and then we're gonna hold here. Now, instead of moving the pedal from the arm, let's move it from this waist. Draw your right rib and hip together, and bring it apart. It doesn't have to be big, it's just a little cinch of the waist going down and up, and down and up. Good, as you get more confident, you can make it bigger. Last two. Hold your next one down there. Take your left leg, lift it up and down. Lift it up and down. Try to keep that pedal still. No movement there as I move my leg. You guys are doing great. Two more, just the straight leg lifts up and down. Now hold it up and give me little circles. Five, four, three, my pedal's drifting. Try to push it down. Now reverse. Five, four, three, two, one. Good, set that leg down and set the pedal down. All right, I'm warming up for sure. I want you to take it to a three, three now. That's gonna give you more weight on the pedal because we're gonna be working some leg work instead of pushing with our arms. So I have it on a three, three. Okay, still with our box, I want you to have your right knee on the corner of the box. You can put the hands on the chair for stability and then push the pedal down with your left foot. My left foot is on the pedal. I'm gonna bring my hands to my hips and I'm kneeling with my right knee. My right toes are turned under for the next exercise. We're gonna keep it there for right now. I want you to let the pedal gently come up, push it right back down. Now with the pedal, it's all about control. It's very easy to just let that pedal bully you around and go quickly. I'm gonna to try to go slow. Two, and one. Now I want you to push the pedal all the way down and hold it to the floor. Stand all the way up, put the knee back down, do it again. So the pedal goes up, you push the pedal down, stand all the way up, and back down. Moving the pedal up, push the pedal down, stand the right knee up, and back down. Nice work. Okay, we're controlling, no need to rush. In fact, if you move slower, you're gonna get more out of this. I'm gonna to try to slow myself down, work with control. Two more. And last one, building up again, next level. Push the pedal down and hold it. Take your hands to the chair for stability to transition. Take the right foot onto the chair, take the hands to the front of the chair. You're gonna push into your right leg and pull the left knee in. Push the left leg long. Pull the left knee in and push it long. Adding up from here, as you feel more comfortable, you might wanna take the hands to the thigh. Now, what I would recommend if you're not feeling that comfortable in this position is to put your chair by a wall. You can hold the wall. Or if you have the handles, then this makes this very comfortable to hold the handles. I don't have that option. Pull the leg down, and now we're gonna move from the right leg. So I'm gonna straighten my right leg to come up. I'm gonna my, take my hands to my hips for this one. Bend the right leg to go back. Now with this exercise, the heavier weight actually makes it a little easier. It gives you some more stability. So if you're trying this and you just don't feel very stable at all, give yourself a little bit more weight. That's gonna help pull the pedal up. Right now, with three and three, I'm gonna use a lot of strength in my right leg to pull the pedal up. If I had it on four, four, it would be giving me more support. Same thing, if you want it harder, you can always go down and wait. One more. And then we're gonna very carefully come down. 
Putting the pedal down, taking the hands back to the chair, taking the knee back to the box, and then gently bringing the pedal up. Good job. We've done one side. We have the other side to do, but we're going to do a little cardio interval between sides. So stand up beside the box. Put your right foot on top of the box. Come into a squat. I want you to squat a three, two, one. Step up and over to the other side. Squat a three, two, one. Up and over the other side. Hands can do whatever you like. Just make sure you're working on your floor. You've got your weight pushing back in your heels. You've got your hips pushing back. If you have a light on your sternum, it's shining forward, not down. So you're keeping that chest lifted. You can certainly stay here. My heart rate's getting up here. But I'm going to ramp it up a little more and make this high impact. So instead of pulsing and stepping over, for the next 30 seconds, I've got my clock in front of me. I'm going to make it a big jump up and over. So here we go. All the way if you want. So you're going to come up and over and up and over. So step up, up, down, down. Up, up, down, down. And if this is too intense, stay with what the option you were doing before. Told you we're doing 30 seconds, which means we've got five. Three, two, one, and release. Good job. Okay, very carefully step your left knee down to the box. Turn your left toes under you. Put the hands on the chair for balance, and then bring the pedal down with your right foot. When you feel comfortable, take the hands to your hips, kneel nice and tall. Let's go to our first variation. The pedal goes up and back down. Now this side's going to be harder. One, we've already done it all on the other side, and these muscles already have to work. And two, we just did a nice cardio interval, and your heart rate might be up. So just breathe. Get that oxygen into your muscles. Two more, one more, and now we're going to add on. Push the pedal all the way down with the right leg, stand up with your left leg. Come down with the knee, pedal goes up, and then you lift the left knee up. Gently bring the pedal up, gently bring it down. I like to try to challenge myself to see how little noise I can make with my pedal. Because when I'm making little noise, I know I'm controlling things. When I'm making a ton of noise, I'm not doing a very good job controlling. One more. Good. And then the next time the pedal's down, you're going to transition. Take the hands to the chair. Your left foot's going to go onto the chair, hands to the front edge of the chair. Push into that left foot, and then now we're flying the right leg in and out. In and out. Again, this is where you might want to be close to a wall. You can also take your hands to your side if you want it harder. Three, two, now hold your right leg straight, push in your left leg, come all the way up and back down. All the way up and back down.
Come with me. 30 seconds. Here we go. Up and over. And up and over. You can use those arms. Really get that heart rate up. The more body that's involved in an exercise, the heart has to work harder to pump that, not the oxygen to those muscles. So use those arms to make it more. 30 seconds isn't too long. We've only got five, four, three. Give me two more up and overs. One more. And done. Good job. Okay, we're going to move the box now. You should still be breathing. We're still recovering. The box is now going to go on the side by the opposite of the pedal. Okay, so I have the box on. I'm going to step on the box with my right foot. I'm going to step on the chair with my left foot. Make sure you're at the very edge of the box closest to the chair because the left leg is going all the way over to the pedal. This is like a lateral lunge where your weight's going to go straight down, but one leg's going to be pushing out to the side. So think, push your weight straight back, the pedal goes out, and then bring your weight right back in. So I'm not necessarily trying to push the pedal. I'm hinging from my hips, and when I do that, the pedal moves. So if you too, try too much to think about pushing the pedal away, your weight's going to be way over on the chair. And I want your weight centered right in your body over that right leg. I'm still catching my breath. Hold the next one down, please. You're holding that squat. Your shoulders are down. I like prayer position. It's a great position to help you stabilize. Now the left leg's going to bend in and press, in and press. Two more. Now this is all about the right leg, right? You feel it? And then come all the way up. Good. Put your left foot on top of the chair. Please make sure your ceilings are high. I'm going to probably be hitting the ceiling here if I put my arms up. So I'm going to keep my arms down. So step your right foot on top of the chair. Make sure that works for you. And step back down. The left foot is going to step behind the box for a curtsy lunge. You're going to step on the chair. Right foot on the chair, back to the box, curtsy lunge. Step up, up, box, curtsy lunge. If you want it more challenging, when you step up with the right foot, don't touch it. Bring it to a hover. Only if you're ready to challenge your balance a little more. Here we are, working cardio again. A lot of down up, requires a lot of heart. Pump the blood, feels good. Take your time. Nice. Two more. One more. Really good. Okay. Before we do the other side, we're going to give our cardio system a little rest and get our abs fired up. I'm going to do this one on a 2-2, so I will be moving this down to a 2-2. And just make sure it's locked in place. Put your feet on the box, sit on the chair. You're going to sit up nice and tall. Take your hands to the pedal behind you with your palms facing your chair. Scoop and tuck and roll yourself back. We're going to push the pedal back. And then pull it back in, thinking ribs to hip. And then push the pedal open, big inhale. Exhale, scoop and pull it back up. Taking those big breaths. Big exhales. You can stay right here with both legs lower. For more challenge, the right leg can come to tabletop. If you're doing one leg in tabletop, we're going to switch on the next one and do the other leg in tabletop. Now, if you want to do both legs in tabletop, you can do that here. So if you're doing single leg, go back to your right leg, do three more 
on the right, and then you'll do three on the left, and that way you're even. If both feet are down, you're just doing both feet down, and if both feet are lifted, you're just doing both feet lifted. We've all got two more, and this should be your last one. You're gonna come all the way up and set the feet down. Nice job. I'm gonna give you lots of levels for the next exercise as well. So sitting up tall, I want you to take your right arm in line with your ear, and then rotate it and look back towards the pedal, again, palm face of the chair. Take your left arm to your ear, push the pedal back, and then think of your left arm pulling you up to the ceiling. You wind back with the right arm, pulling up, up, up with the left arm. You can stay right here with both feet firmly planted on that box. Or option one, you're going to lift the right leg. Option two, you're going to lift both legs. Makes it a lot harder here. Two more. Last one. Good job. Bring the pedal down. Set your feet down if you're lifted and come back to seated. Reach the left arm up in line with the ear. Turn towards the pedal. Take it down with the palm facing the chair. Reach the right arm up by the ear and start pushing the pedal back. Reaching those right arms to the ceiling. Going back and lifting, lifting, lifting. A lot of the time it's not what we're doing, it's the intention we're putting behind it and how we're doing it. If you would like more challenge, your left arm will lift, or left leg. Your left arm, don't lift it, you gotta keep it down. And if you want more challenge, the right leg's gonna meet it. Hello abdominals. Three. Two, lift, lift, lift through the right fingers. One more. Good, come up and set the feet down. We are ready for the other side. You knew it was coming. We have to change it back to a three, three. So go ahead and put it to three, three. Lock and load it, make sure it's good. And let's, I will be facing away from you for this one. I'm gonna step my left foot on the box. I'm gonna step my right foot on the chair. Notice on my left foot, it's at the very edge of the box, as close to the chair as possible. Take your right foot onto the pedal. Do not push out with the right. Drop down into a, a squat. I want you to squat backwards. Just by the squatting back, the pedal moves. And then go right back up. I'm squatting down, 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 and coming back up. I want you to keep your weight centered right here over your left leg. Like a single leg lateral lunge. Two more to go. One more, hold it down there. Now keep this isometric, just no movement in the left, squeeze it, push out and in with the right. Out and in with the right. Four, three, two, one. Come all the way up. Step the right foot on top of the pedal. Check your ceiling height. Step the left foot on top of the pedal. Left foot goes to the box. Get ready for the curtsy lunge. Your right leg goes behind and down. Then you're going to step up, step up to the box, curtsy lunge. Up and up to the box, curtsy lunge. You have options. If you want it harder, watch your left leg when you step up to the chair. Don't touch it, hover it. Good, it's good to find a dristy or a gazing point here. Got this wall, beautiful wall in front of me. Four. And three. And two, one more. Good, come down and rest. Okay, we're gonna change the pedal weight again. Two, two. Make sure again, it's locked. It's always my fear it's not gonna lock. Now I have 
a pedal that can split. You don't have to have that. I will show an exercise with the split pedal if you do have it. What I'm gonna have you do is lay on your stomach on the chair facing your pedal. Now, what I like to do is make sure that when I'm pushing my pedal down and it's at the very bottom, my wrists and my shoulders are in alignment. And that way I know I'm in the right position here. I like to externally rotate my legs a little bit and I like to push my pubic bone down into the chair and have my legs separate. That works best for my back. What I'm gonna have you do with the pedal is lift the pedal, keeping the arm straight, lifting the chest into a little swan dive. And then bring the pedal right back down. So you're lifting the chest, rolling the shoulders back, pushing the sternum forward, and then slowly bringing the pedal right back down. I do like two and two for this. If you feel this is enough weight, you can always add weight. For me, I, if you get to the point where you feel like the pedal is kind of bullying you around, so to speak, that's when you know you've got too much weight on. You wanna be able to control the pedal. You wanna be able to have your muscles doing the work. You don't want the springs pushing you around. So with this weight, I really feel a good extension. Do that one more time. Now I want you to hold it when you're down at the bottom with your spine straight. Keep your spine straight. We're gonna bend your elbows and straighten your elbows. Bend your elbows and straighten your elbows. We're gonna take this to a single arm because I know with double arm, this isn't too much, but it's gonna add a lot when we lift one arm. So one more with double arm, and then take your right arm and reach it out to a T. Left arm only, pushing down and up, eight, seven. Notice your hips, mine always shift. I'm gonna to try to ground down from my left, even though it wants to lift. Two more. Now we'll switch, take your right hand on, left arm. Now my right hip is gonna to wanna to lift, I'm trying to push it down. Last two, one more, good. And then come all the way up. You can kind of, since you have a box there, you can slide back to it and put the pedal down and go into a little cat stretch. Now, if you have the split pedal, I will do the next exercise with it, but I will also show you an option if you don't have a split pedal. And if you don't know what the split pedal is, you probably don't have it. Or you may have it, you don't know it, but there's a little knob over on the side and you basically can just pull it and twist it, and what that does is make the pedals move independently. And there's a lot of fun stuff you can do with that. So if you have a split pedal, do to that right now. And then we're gonna lay back on our belly, situate yourself forward again. So now your arms are gonna be able to move independently. So again, we're gonna do that swan dive, but we're gonna only do it with one arm. So you're gonna swan dive and bend your right arm, look to the right, and press it down. Now if you don't have the split pedal, you're gonna keep the pedal pushing down. So if this arm's holding the pedal, it's not gonna move, and I'm just gonna bring this arm up, but the pedal's not gonna go anywhere. We're gonna be alternating. So let's start from the beginning. You're gonna lift the right arm and look towards it and push it down. Lift the left arm, look towards it, and push it down. So remember, if you do not have the split pedal, your pedal doesn't move. You're holding the pedal down and you're just lifting one arm up. So your right arm is just lifting off the pedal, and then your left arm is lifting off the pedal. And you'll get a very similar motion. You won't have the, the pedal that you're pushing against, but you'll still get that nice twist. Let's go four, and three, and two, and one. Good. And then we're gonna pull the pedal up, slide back to that box, and come into a little cat stretch. Anytime you do extension, it's really good to flex your spine. And if you've got your split pedal, you can go ahead and turn it the opposite way. So now you have one solid pedal. And then do a little extension the opposite way. For the next set of exercises, I'm gonna to have to move my box and chair around just for a better positioning. But I will show you what you're gonna do. All you're gonna to have to do is move your box back to the pedal side then I'm gonna to have to turn everything around. So here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna take your box, place it back where you started, like this, and then I will meet you. I'm gonna be turning mine halfway around.
Okay, so here I am. I'm exactly like you. I've just turned my pedal, my everything about 90 degrees so that you have a better view here. I'm going to take my right hand on the box. I'm going to take my left hand on to the pedal. I'm going to push that pedal down. And then I'm going to step my feet back and come into a nice plank position. Dropping the tail, rolling the shoulders back. So it's just like a plank I was doing on the floor, but I've got this nice pedal that I can work with to work a little bit more core. I'm going to start by pumping the pedal up and down, up and down. So I've got more weight on my left, right arm, and my left arm is just moving up and down. Two more. Last one. Now let the pedal come up, turn your toes to the chair, lift your left arm to the ceiling. Take your left hand back to the pedal, turn your toes to the floor, push the pedal all the way down, turn your toes to the right, let your right arm go to the ceiling. Put the hand back to the box, turn the feet back to the floor, do it again. So you turn the feet, you lift the pedal, lift the left arm, turn the feet, lower the pedal, lift the box arm, and keep rotating and doing the other side. So as I'm rotating, I'm with control, rotating side to side. Nice job. One more. Last one. Come back to the center, pull the pedal halfway down. Holding here, I'm going to pull the right knee into the chest, set it down. Pull the left knee into the chest, set it down. I'm going to move my right hand out a little bit so that I'm more square. Four. Three. I'm holding that pedal as still as I can. Two. And one. Good. Step your feet forward. Push the pedal all the way down. Take the right hand off the box and twist it up. Take the hand to the box. Bring the pedal all the way up. Take the left hand up. Now with all of this, your knees can be a little bent if that feels better on your back. Let's do it again. Push the pedal down. Take the right arm up. Pushing down with the left, reaching up with the right. Take the right arm to the box. Lift the pedal and let the left arm come up. And again, you push the pedal down. You rotate the torso. Take the hand down, the pedal goes up, and you rotate the other way. And we'll do that two more times. Push down, lift and rotate. Put the hand on the box, come up, lift and rotate, and come down and roll yourself all the way up. Give your shoulders a few shoulder rolls because we're gonna do that again. Let's go ahead and go to the other side. Okay, we are all ready for the other side. Left hand will be on the box, right hand on the pedal. I'm gonna push the pedal down so it's even with the box, and then step my feet back into that plank position. Just your right arm's gonna push the pedal down and up, and down and up. So I've got most of my weight in my left hand. I'm stabilizing here. I should have mentioned this on the other side, but you can always drop to your knees if this feels too much of a challenge. You can always drop to your elbow if you're having any issues with your wrist. So your left elbow could be on the box. Good. Now, when the pedal goes up, turn your toes towards it and reach the right arm up to a side plank. Turn the toes back down, push the pedal down, turn away from the chair and reach your left arm. Hand goes to the box, you turn slowly. Now remember that pedal is going to want to quickly push up and down and you're the one in control. So you're the one that's going to be making that pedal move slowly. That's all part of the work. If you let the pedal go uncontrollable or uncontrolled, you're not going to get the benefit. So see how slow I'm trying to push that pedal down. And then I'm even slower trying to let the pedal come up. That's the hard part. Good. One more each side. And then we'll come back with both hands down, step your feet up, let the pedal come up. 
Now a little bend in your knees if you need. You're gonna push the pedal down, reach the left arm up, take a nice big spinal twist. Take the left hand down, bring the pedal up, and twist the other way. Hand goes to the pedal, I push it down and twist. Hand goes to the box and I lift it up and twist the other way. These twists feel so good on the back. And keep the knees as bent as you need them to be. And then we'll do that one more time. Both hands down. And then let's roll ourselves up one vertebrae at a time. And just give yourself a few shoulder rolls and release. All right, it's time to finish. I'm gonna turn my stuff back the other way, but you don't have to do anything. Okay, I've changed everything back. So you have your box on the side that is not having the pedal, and it's long wise. You're gonna come onto your knees on the box, and then I'm gonna take my right leg onto the pedal for a pigeon pose. Basically, your right knee is gonna be reaching out to the corner so it's gonna be not in front of you. So if your belly's here in front, your knee's really angled out to the side. And then my foot is angled to the other side. And my left leg is gonna be just resting on the box. If you can, you're gonna come onto your elbows and just drop forward into a little pigeon pose. Now we did a lot of leg work today, so that's why I'm adding this in. This is actually a stretch that you should be hopefully doing every day whether it's on your Pilates chair, whether it's just on a yoga mat, whether it's on the kitchen counter. <laughs> There's so many places that, the, the edge of a, a couch, any surface that feels like it's in the right position, you can do the stretch. I'm hoping that you're feeling it right here in the glute, the outer thigh, even going down into the IT band. These are all areas for most of us that get extremely tight and this is a good way to release it. Now with the chair, we have the pedal here. So you can even take your hands and push that pedal away and then pull the pedal up, making it more kind of an active stretch, going into the stretch and then pulling back out of the stretch and going into the stretch and pulling back out of the stretch. What I like to call just kind of working the edge of your stretch. So you're working to your edge, your end range, you're not going past your edge, you're just kind of changing your edge. The more you let your body start to stretch and you allow yourself to go deeper without pushing it, your body's going to respond to that very gentle motion. Let's do that one more time if you're pushing the pedal. And let's come up. Put your hands onto the chair. You can come up onto your foot on the chair and you'll just do a little hip flexor stretch here. Now, if that is too much, you can turn to the side and you can have your foot on the box and just do a little hip flexor stretch here. So I know that is a pretty high position to be in or you can also come down here and have your knee on the floor or the leg on the floor. So a few different options if this is too intense. I'm going to stay right here. You can also straighten the leg and go into a nice hip flexor stretch. I know I'm quite tall, so this may not be accessible for some people. So don't be afraid to switch it and do the other options. I'll show you on the other side. So let's put your right leg down into the pigeon pose. Your left leg's going to go onto the chair with the knee. Now this is my tweaky side. We'll see how it goes. Your knee is pointing out to this diagonal. You're just sinking into your hips. And if you're comfortable, you come down. You may be really tight, and this may be too much to come down at all. And that's fine, you don't need to come down. Just listen to what your body's telling you. When it needs to back off, you listen and you back off. If you feel you can move farther, you listen and you move farther. I'm gonna go ahead and listen to my body. I'm gonna take that pedal, but I'm not gonna push too far because it's already telling me this may be enough. So what I did on the other side, it's not gonna work for me on this side, but if you're okay, remember you're pushing down and you're coming up. This is gonna be way smaller. So, you know, I've got two different bodies, my right body and my left body. Everybody has two different bodies. 
Now we don't want to want make one body do the same thing as, as the other body. So if we've got one body that can't do as much, we're going to be very gentle with it and we're going to coach it along. We're not going to overdo it. See over time, I already feel like it's starting to loosen up. So sometimes it just takes a few seconds for you to feel a little bit better in the stretch and to be able to move a little bit more in the stretch. Good. Okay, then we're going to come up when you're ready and do the second stretch. So remember that probably the deepest stretch is to have the left foot on the chair and we're opening that hip flexor. If that doesn't work, you can have the left foot on the box, right knee on the floor or right leg long into like the runner stretch, or you can turn to the side like I had done that before. So either one, you're just letting your hip flexor release with that right leg. And then come all the way up. Put your hands on the box, step onto the to the box, and put your hands on the chair, step on the box, turn around. Now, another option for our outer thigh and glute stretch is a figure four. If you feel like pitching at any point is too much, this is another thing that you can take, which feels nice on those hips. Another release for the hips. You know, I want to make sure that we release those areas that we work so much today. So I'm going to sit up really tall. I'm going to have my left foot nice and flexed. And then only if you are able to, you're going to lean forward. And what that means is if you already feel enough stretch, no need to lean forward. You're just leaning forward into the stretch. And again, you can do kind of that little moving in and out, that kind of active stretch where you're going towards your edge, kind of testing the water out and in. You're doing it very gently though, you're not overdoing it. You're breathing being kind to your body. Your body can do amazing things, it just did. I mean, you just did a whole hour of amazing workout. I'm really proud of you guys, that was awesome. And then we'll do the other side, crossing. And I'm gonna stand for the side, I'm just gonna be okay with where I am. And this is where I am, and I feel okay with it. This is enough stretch. I'm feeling the release. If I push too much, I start to feel my knee a little bit. So this knee, I've had knee surgery. This foot, I've had foot surgery. This hip is the one that always gets out of alignment. So I'm just gonna be really gentle with this side. Good, and let's go ahead and release that foot down. You can stay seated this way. I'm gonna turn so I can face you guys. Um, I'd rather you stay with your feet on the box. So you're just going to roll your shoulders back. You can close your eyes if you'd like. Just kind of take these last few seconds to tune in to how you're feeling. Hopefully you're feeling amazing after that workout. I know I'm feeling pretty good. Or I mean, I'm feeling amazing. <laughs> and then I want you to take those arms up. Big breath. Give me three big breaths. Fill those lungs up. Reach those arms tall. And then bring it down the heart center. Do that one more time. Big breath in, fill the lungs. Let it all go. One more time. Big breath in. And let it go. You are done for today. Thank you so much for working out with me. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope to work out with you soon. Have a great day.